Thomas Theodore Maryland and the Maryland Cryptid Museum. We should start with the collector. Thomas Theodore Maryland was born in 1782 in Hellingshire, northern England. He was the son of a rich aristocrat and biologist, Edward Maryland, and would eventually follow in his father's footsteps of fringe naturalism. His mother had died in childbirth and he was raised by his dutiful father, until Edward's death at the age of 76. Thomas would become introverted and spend the majority of his life in seclusion, traveling extensively to collect bizarre specimens of species that were yet to be catalogued by reputable zoologists and naturalists. Amongst various anomalies attributed to his life, the most peculiar is his lifespan. At aged 80, he still resembled a 40-year-old man, this being remarked upon perhaps more than his incredible collection when he eventually took his specimens on a tour of the Americas. This brief foray into the press garnered much attention, his collection was condemned as a fraud and his life put under intense scrutiny. Yet it is noteworthy that whilst attending a few scientific functions he befriended eminent mathematicians and biologists who were fascinated by his knowledge of fringe physics and chemistry, and was also encouraged to release a paper of theories pertaining to the possibility of time travel. A brief accusation of theft from a fellow collector of the odds saw a public feud where the impetuous spoiled child in Maryland was brought forth. Any respect gathered from the public was quickly lost. He disappeared back into obscurity. He was presumed dead around the turn of the century, until in 1942 a man purporting to be Maryland donated a building to a London orphanage with the proviso that the basement never be unsealed. The man could be no older than 45, so was presumed to be a relative of Thomas. After this event, he was never heard of again. In 2006, the basement was uncovered during a planned demolition of the building. Within, hundreds of large crates, filled with thousands of specimens, artifacts, and diaries were found. It was dubbed the Maryland Cryptid Collection, its mere existence would challenge the established scientific community if proven authentic. Within his rather thoroughly detailed diaries, Thomas makes allusions to a number of esoteric ideologies concerning quantum mechanics, theories that were yet to be established at the time they were written. His knowledge of physics, and discoveries of artifacts that challenged historical accounts added to the enigma of his life, and his collection. It is also notable that he mentions an artifact called the Alabast, which could be attributed to his unusually long life. Born in 1782 to a rich aristocratic family, his mother died during childbirth and he was raised by his father Edward. His father was a general in the army, but once retired became enamored with esoteric natural history, investing in profitable companies to fund his travels across the world, seeking out elusive artifacts and hidden species which resided in forgotten continents or darkened places, away from prying human eyes. They traveled together for many years until his father's sudden death. This event turned Thomas into a recluse, seeking solace in his work and befriending very few. He tutored himself in the Grand Library at Maryland House, yet also studied at the University College London on Gower Street. Even then, he isolated himself from other students. A bizarre quality of Maryland was his apparent permanent youthfulness. Even in his 80s, he still resembled a 40-year-old, albeit of odd complexion, and his few bizarre forays into the eyes of the media only furthered his infamy. He was accused of practicing dark arts to prolong his life. Yet, eminent scholars secretly allied themselves with him, encouraging him to share his collection with the world. In 1899, he took a small portion of his specimens on tour across America. Conservative attitudes of the time condemned these creatures, calling them blasphemous. His reaction was severe and the tour was cancelled before it reached California. In the following years, Maryland extended the collection exponentially. He traveled to the four corners of the earth and learned of ideologies and sciences which astounded those who corresponded with him. 
he held within his ranks a legion of colleagues who would benefit from his endless search. In truth, we did not know what he was searching for, until very recently. The collection houses mathematics not dreamt of in his time, of theories that we are only now contemplating. Marilyn posits the possibilities of the multiverse, of time travel, of quantum mechanics, before the terms existed. Marilyn is an enigma. He fell into obscurity, until 1942. The Tunbridge Orphanage for Boys was contacted by a man purporting to be Thomas Theodore Marilyn, in the spring of that year. He wished to donate a sizable London townhouse to the orphanage for use once the war was over, and children returned. The only proviso was that the basement of the house never be opened and the house never sold. The orphanage stood by this promise, until absolved in the 60s and the existence of the cellar forgotten. Sealed behind two brick walls, the door was only found by chance when the foundations were checked prior to demolition. The Thomas Maryland pictured in a local newspaper, handing over the documents for ownership to the new proprietor was in his forties. By this time, Maryland would have been over 160 years old. The name sparked interest from those who had followed Maryland's work, most assuming him long dead. But the man claiming to be Thomas promptly disappeared leaving no evidence of his existence. The Maryland estate was also sold off and money given to charity. What he left was the most incredible collection ever known, actual specimens of taxidermied dragons, the infant forms of werewolves, artifacts from ancient vampire nations and the trappings of nefarious scientists whose existence was presumed to be mere fiction. It was this, and the apparent immortality of Maryland that drove me to become rather fanatical about understanding the life of this man, and his world-changing collection. What had allowed him to live so long? Where had these specimens originated from, considering there are no other examples of these species to be found on the earth? It is this that I find so thrilling and yet so terrifying. One might ask themselves what lurks in my neighbor's basement? Stay paranoid my friends.